Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Meta Transformer, which is a unified framework for multimodal learning. So let's get started. You see, human brain processes information from multiple sensory inputs together. For example, visual input, auditory input, and tactile signals as well. In fact, uh, when we are processing those signals, knowledge from one source can benefit the comprehension of another. So can our deep learning models also do the same? And that is where Meta Transformer comes in. Meta Transformer, as you see here, utilizes the same backbone. So it has a transformer backbone and it utilizes the same backbone to encode 12 different modalities, right? So multimodal is no longer just about image and text. It's about 12 different modalities that you see here. Uh, image, text, audio, infrared images, videos, table, time series, graph, hyperspectral images, IMU inertial measurement unit uh, based readings, right? X-ray images, point clouds, right? All of those 12 modalities are nicely combined together in this single transformer model, single transformer encoder model called as Meta Transformer. The nice point about this model is that it has a frozen encoder. So when you're trying to uh, do some, uh, you know, evaluation for a particular task, you don't really fine tune for that task. Also, unlike other models like ImageBind, there is no paired multimodal training data which is used to train this model, right? So you don't use any paired multimodal data. Okay. Uh, now, Meta Transformer has three main components in it. One, there is a unified data tokenizer so that you can actually take uh, data from any modality and tokenize it into a unified format. Second, modality shared encoder. So all the modalities share the same encoder. And that is what we'll talk about. You know, what is the encoder and what are the specifics of that encoder? And third, there are task specific heads for downstream tasks. So you can use this model for various kinds of tasks, as we'll see later in the video. And that is why you have this task specific heads as well. Now, you know, if you compare this uh, meta transform model to other models which have been proposed in the past, of course, there has been the standard transformer model and it can only deal with text, right? And, uh, you know, therefore there is no paired data which is required and does not have any sharing of parameters because it's just text as such, right? And then there have been other single modality transformer models like VIT for images or point transformer for point clouds, uh, AST for speech for speech related tasks. Right? More recently, there have been transformer models which can process multiple modalities and by multiple typically they mean two. For example, Clip, Flamingo, they can process images and text together, right? Uh, but they, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and then, you know, there has been beat three, which I covered in one of the previous videos. It can also process the images and text together. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, then there has been image bind, which can actually process a whole bunch of, you know, around six different modalities together. And it requires paired data, right? So essentially image bind, as we discussed, basically has uh, in the in a previous video, as we discussed, you know, image bind actually binds everything considering image at the center. Now, Meta Transformer is an interesting model because it can actually handle 12 different modalities, not one or two, all right, or not even six, 12 different modalities. It has a whole backbone which is basically shared across all of these modalities, and it does not really require any paired data at all, right? So it is unpaired in the sense that you don't need any combination of modalities in your training data so, so that Meta Transformer can learn from it, right? So now there are three components in Meta Transformer, as I discussed on the previous slide. One is data, data to sequence tokenization. The second is unified feature encoding. And the third is uh, specific heads, uh, you know, tailor made modality specific heads for downstream task learning. Right? So as you see in, in this diagram, right, it can actually take text, it can take images, audio, uh, you know, and point cloud. So the first layer is data to sequence tokenizer. Uh, they have different kinds of tokenizers so as to basically get the final output uh, as a sequence of embeddings. Right? And then there's a unified multimodal model, which basically takes all of them and encodes the information coming from these different uh, modalities. And finally, you have these task specific heads, which can be actually used for all kinds of tasks, like for example, paraphrasing task in text, sentiment analysis task, inference task, classification, image classification task, object detection task, image segmentation task, you know, classification of point clouds, part segmentation, scene segmentation of point clouds, or speech classification, and so on, several other tasks, right? Remember that uh, the parameters of this encoder model are all frozen, while the parameters of the data to sequence tokenizer are trainable. Now, this basically means that the total number of trainable parameters are very small. They're just dependent on how many embedding parameters you have, because the transformer parameters are actually frozen, right? So let's now discuss how is data to sequence tokenization done in Meta Transformer. Okay. 
So, you know, uh, uh, so essentially, uh, we will essentially talk about this first layer data to sequence tokenizer in this slide. OK, uh, well, the general meta scheme is basically what is shown here, right? So you take the input data, uh, you group the input data in some way, and then you do uh, a convolution based on local data. So, you know, if, if you have groups, then you have groups, right? And on the group, you can do convolution. And then you extract some semantics which are then transformed so as to get the final embeddings, d-dimensional embeddings, you know, either one token or a sequence of tokens, which can be fed as input to a transformer encoder model. Yeah. Specifically, what you see uh, in these four things is how do you process text, how do you process images, how do you process point clouds, and how do you process audio, uh, audio right? So those are, those are the four things which are shown here. Now, these four things are shown because many other modalities can be expressed in terms of these four things, as we will see, right? For example, uh, infrared images are also, after all, typical images, uh, like, like typical images, right? Similarly, videos can be thought of as images, multiple images combined together and so on, okay? So, but if you look at uh, these specific things, for example, processing of text, well, it is done using word piece embeddings and with a vocabulary size of 30,000. If you look at images, uh, well, the, the steps which are followed to process images and tokenize them are as follows. You take an image, you reshape it into a sequence of flattened 2D patches. You take an image, divide it into nice uh, 2D patches, right? Uh, and then you use a projection layer to project each of those patch to D dimensions. Okay. So that is how you basically, you know, uh, uh, take the images, patchify them, and then you apply S cross S convolution so as to get D and, and then you have a final projection layer. So as to essentially get a d-dimensional embedding uh, or a sequence of d-dimensional embedding tokens. Okay. Now you also process the infrared images and hyperspectral images in the same way, just by essentially taking the temperature uh, values uh, alongside the visual features. So rather than just having RGB, you can actually add another channel called temperature, and that's your infrared image. Right. Uh, for processing videos, also you follow the same philosophy. It's just that rather than doing 2D convolutions, you will be doing 3D convolutions. Okay. Now about point clouds, so how do you process point clouds? Um, well, the processing for point clouds is a little more involved. So what are point clouds? Point clouds are a cloud of points, so data set contains several points, and each point essentially has X, Y, Z coordinate and some features. So therefore you represent each point as a combination of PI and FI, where PI are 3D coordinates and FI are the features related to the point cloud. Now, uh, further, what you do is to basically try to group those point clouds. Remember, the meta scheme says group them. Right? So how do you group them? Well, you use two popular algorithms. One is called as the farthest point sampling. It, it basically, uh, so this is not for grouping specifically, but if you have lots of point clouds, very dense point cloud, you want to first sample a few of those points. So that's basically done uh, such that they're representative points, right? So that is basically done using farthest point sampling, right? Uh, to sample a representative skeleton uh, of the original point clouds. Thereby, you basically reduce the data set to 25% of the original data set. Further, what you do is to do KNN based uh, uh, grouping. So you essentially use KNN to group neighboring points together. Now, within those groups, essentially, you want to do convolution. So you basically do that, uh, you know, using one cross one convolution uh, to essentially finally get uh, outputs which are flattened and then they become the representations for the point cloud. So that's how you process point clouds. Um, and uh, then you have audio spectrogram. So audio, so audio has to be processed. So you basically take the audio, you split the audio into fixed size, uh, um, fixed size clips or you know, uh, fixed size uh, uh, wave files, right? And for each of them, we are going to compute MEL filter bank, MEL frequency capstone coefficient features, right? Uh, you, you basically represent them in, in terms of a spectrogram. So, you, and then you take the spectrogram, you split the spectrogram into patches from time and frequency dimensions. Just like you uh, split spectrogram are like images. So just like you split the images into 2D patches, the same thing you actually do with the spectrogram images also. However, note that spectrogram images will have overlap in the time dimension clearly. Okay, so that's that. So, so basically you still do the S cross S convolution and you finally uh, essentially flatten the output so as to have a sequence of D dimensional representations to uh, or embeddings to represent your audio. Right? So that is how you know various kinds of modalities are represented in Meta Transformer. Now, how does the encoding in MetaTransformer work? So, well, uh, uh, I mean, as we discussed, MetaTransformer has three parts. There is a sequence tokenization, there is then encoding, and then the third part is the downstream task specific heads, right? So, the, unif the unified encoder basically has frozen parameters, as we said. It's basically, a VIT model, which vision transform model, which is the backbone network, and it is pre trained on the Lyon 2 billion dataset with contrastive learning, okay? So, you use a pre-trained VIT model. Basically, you know, no extra work is done for meta transformer. You just use a pre-trained VIT model and you keep it frozen. Okay. Uh, 
uh, this VIT model has been pre-trained using Lion data set with contrastive learning. For text, basically, you use the pre-trained text tokenizer of Clip. So there's a text tokenizer and there is a, uh, you know, the image VIT model. Now, um, when, when an input comes in, you essentially prepend CLS token to the input and, uh, uh, you know, and then the input can be of any modality that you like, right? And you basically pass on, uh, pass it on through this, you know, through this encoder and uh, the last layers, uh, final hidden state for the corresponding to the CLS token is basically what is used uh, uh, for downstream specific processing. Uh, well, you also provide a position embedding, so one dimensional position embeddings um, you uh, and those are additive in nature, just like in the standard transformer model. The task specific heads are just MLPs, just like in a standard word kind of model, right? Like you have like a dense layer followed by uh, the final output softmax layer, which is what you use even in the meta transform model. Uh, and well, I mean, the base encoder is uh, is VIT model, as we already discussed. Uh, meta, so in the paper, they basically present results for meta transformer B16 model, which basically means that it uses base scale encoder, which basically means it has 12 transformer blocks. It also has 12 attention heads, and the image pack size S is basically fixed to 16. Uh, the transformer model again is frozen, and uh, it can also be used in a tuned state. So you could either freeze it, or you could basically be tuning it as per the uh, downstream task. But they basically say that yes, you can actually get. Uh, uh, significantly good accuracy, even if you basically don't tune uh, the the encoder of the meta transform model. Okay, so here are some uh, broad results across some of those tasks that you see here, uh, some of those uh, you know uh, modalities that you see here. Uh, what you observe is that if you were just using image bind uh, specifically for infrared images, audio, point cloud, on images, and and just standard images, you basically get some levels of accuracy that is indicated by this yellow convex shape, right? But then, if you use, uh, uh, you know, if if you use meta transformer, you essentially end up getting uh, the blue colored thing, which is shown here. Of course, if you use modality specific state of the art models, you get better results. I mean, in several cases, you actually end up getting better results. But then, you know, you still get reasonable results if you just use meta transformer model. Uh, you know, uh, and the great point is that yes, meta transformer model works across modalities. So uh, lastly, let me talk about how does meta transform perform across other modalities and other tasks. So to measure that in the paper, they have actually shown results across several modalities, 12 different modalities and several tasks per modality. So for example, for text, they perform classification on the glue benchmark, which is basically uh, a data set uh, uh, you know, of several NLP tasks. Specifically, they experiment with paraphrasing, sentiment analysis, duplication, uh, detection, inferencing, uh, and question answering tasks. Uh, they also experiment with three different tasks for images, classification, detection, and segmentation. For classification, they use ImageNet 1000 one data set, which basically contains around 1.3 million images with 1,000 different classes. They also use uh, you know, MS Coco for object detection and ADE20K for segmentation. For point cloud uh, kind of task, the uh, point cloud uh, modality, they do again experiments with three different tasks, shape classification, for which they use ModelNet 40, which is basically CAD models across 40 different classes. Scene classification, S3DIS, which is basically you know, a data set with six large indoor areas and 13 semantic classes comprising of 271 rooms. So it's basically a data set of uh, indoor scenes. Right? And then they also experiment with object segmentation, shape net uh, part data set, which basically contains 16,880 object models across 16 shape categories. Now, uh, you see there are other kinds of modalities and the task defined per modality as well. So for example, for audio, you essentially they, they perform classification using speech commands V2 data set, which is a large number of one second recordings with 35 common speech commands uh, and, and so on. So uh, for graph data, they particularly experiment with this data set, which basically contains uh, organic chemical molecules uh, you know, as, as, uh, as graphs. So molecules are also, of course, graphs, and they basically try to do uh, you know, uh, uh, prediction uh, prediction at the graph level using the meta transfer model. So I'm not going to re show you detailed results for each of them. You can actually look at the paper for detailed results, but the takeaways are as follows. The performance from meta transformer, in my view, is not as impressive as state of the art models, right? Specifically because they are not tuning the encoder at all, right? But it is a single model for understanding several modalities together. So if you basically are dealing with a lot of those modalities, Maybe rather than actually performing the cumbersome task of downloading, you know, modality specific models, you may just want to install one meta transformer and that just does all the work. Uh, well, not to the uh, not not as great accuracy as modality specific ones, but still reasonable accuracies. Okay. 
Also, it has very small number of trainable parameters, specifically if you have kept the encoder uh, frozen. So that basically helps in reducing the overall number of trainable parameters and keeps the number of activations and therefore the RAM in check. It establishes, uh, you know, while I said that it does not perform really as good as the state of the art on most of the tasks, on some tasks it does show state of the art results. For example, on 3D point cloud understanding, uh, you know, uh, specifically on some data sets, uh, it actually shows better results than the state of the art models as of now. So in summary, in this video, I talked about meta transformer model, which basically utilizes the same frozen VIT backbone to encode 12 different modalities. So far, this is the uh, largest number of modalities that can be handled by any single model. It consists of three different components, a unified data tokenizer to take data uh, uh, specified across different modalities and, uh, uh, and, and encode it into uh, a consistent and a unified tokenization format. The second one is modality shared encoder, which basically is about uh, taking these uh, representations and then encoding them using transformer layers. And the third one is uh, task specific heads for downstream tasks, right? whether it is classification task, segmentation task or object detection task and so on. Depending on that, you have uh, task specific heads. While most of these task specific heads are just dense layers, some of them are also more complicated. For example, for object detection and image segmentation, you surely need other task specific heads as well. OK, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.